Hi. Hello, Aditi. Elaine is not coming today. I don't know. Usually she is. Yes. No I'll idea. I'll put a reminder on the group. Yes, she is. <laughs> Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Aditi, you know the nibs we bought earlier with this pen? Mm. I think we had bought them for lettering because they're exactly the same as the nibs that came yesterday. Are they are zebra G. Okay. So I have a set of 20. Great. <laughs> Good. So you can I don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind. Yes. I don't mind. <laughs> So, which are the nibs which are used for drawing? There is a smaller nib. It's called a crow quill. So that Can you spell is, that? Like crow, C R O W. Oh, C R O W. And quill. quill. Q U I L. -L. Yeah. Okay. So, a crow quill uh, is a much thinner nib which uh, and more cylindrical. And traditionally, that was used for um, illustration with pen. But over time, uh, the zebra G nib has been used more and more, especially by anime um, illustrators, because it offers larger flexibility. So you can make more nuanced strokes with that, as opposed to, uh, I mean, the crow quill is traditionally used to make designs, which eventually will be converted into um, like a, a print. So because it does very fine lines, those can then be translated onto what am I saying over here? The there's like a uh, it's like a lithograph or an acid etched illustration. Which so what they do is that they will transfer this image onto a metal sheet with a special ink, and then they will put it in acid bath. And wherever you have the lines there, the acid will eat up. All the uh, metal, and then mm -hmm. fill with ink, and then you print that. So that was traditionally what was used for black and white illustrations in books. And um, uh, this, uh, so this is for when you want to make illustrations look so fine that they are still in single color, but they almost look like they are a black and white photograph. So it's almost like the pixel size is very tiny. But uh, now, we're, when you're uh, when we're making illustration, everything is anyway digitally printed, so you don't need to have that uh, specific dot okay. size. Yeah. Okay. So last week I had jumped one class with you all. We were supposed to do metal objects. In my mind, I always think Tuesday is the first class, but this month. Because I think we had an extra class last month. You all were at the tail end of the cycle. So I'm going to, okay. uh, we're going to do the me metallic effects today. Um, where are we? Let me share screen. All right, so here um, we are going to translate these color images of white metal objects into black and white shaded uh, illustrations. So there's a, it's very interesting how because of the light and shadow, the play of light and shadow, an object looks three-dimensional to us. And there's a lot of information that we get from just this, the light and shadow. And when we want to translate images, uh, sorry, any kind of picture into pencil, essentially we have to learn to see color as uh, a particular shade in gray. So in the beginning, it's good to have objects which are either white like these, 
Sometimes you might come across images or photographs of even fruit and vegetables that are painted white like plaster. And uh, then a study of how light shadow highlights works on those objects uh, helps you to translate them into a monochromatic uh, scheme, color scheme. The next best thing is to use white metals. So you don't have to think about the color. Now, in this case, we have a color for the handle, which is a wooden texture. But the rest, we can easily see it as a, a tone of pencil color, right? So we are going to start off with illustrating one of these metal spheres. And in this process, we are going to just translate all of this as pencil, dark, medium, light, and maybe a certain gradation if applicable. So in this process, you will just be able to crunch all the three-dimensional data into two dimension, and then we will move on to the other objects. Okay. Okay. It suddenly becomes so dark over here. It's been raining. Oh, very nice, Amulya. Hmm. Okay, let me just have a quick look, but keep it held up. Okay, very nice. Um, good. Very nice. Okay, so now over here, although, I mean, this is all good. If you will ask me what needs work on is developing a range of tones. So, uh, I mean, we can always say this is nice and stop at it. But when I'm, uh, I, I need to give you some information on how you can see your own improvement. So in pencil sketching, the two, three factors that you can figure out for evaluating whether something is good or bad, or not bad, why am I saying bad? What needs work? Uh, apart from the usual, so your shape, size, proportion, all that is fine. But in terms of the medium for pencil, what we need to develop is tonal variation. And right now we are actually working with just one pencil, but usually pencil sketches are made in with maybe 10 different pencils and also then dipping into really dark charcoal or dark, um, so graphite is very gray and then charcoal makes it really black. So there you have a lot of range, but we can make a very dramatic high contrast image even with the regular pencil. So what often happens is that we start, we often start at a medium range already. So we have to develop more in the lighter range because that is the more difficult thing to do. Getting darker is fairly easy. You just have to add pressure. But be, keeping your line, lines lighter becomes difficult. And light can get very subtle. Huh? It just, um, it's not... Um, so the more you make it, you realize that hey, I can make it even lighter, even lighter. So it can come as quite a surprise. And um, then there is the transition between these. That takes work as well. There are often places where the light overlaps another light. And that is where sometimes you have a dark patch. And that makes a lot of your illustration patchy. So that transition needs to be smooth. That again comes with a lighter hand. And then even transiting from a light to a dark seamlessly, but in shape. So often when we do it in one parallel, we can do this dark to light or light to dark. But when it comes to different shapes, at that point, especially in faces and all, so you'll, you'll see that there is a, a dark, light, dark happening in a different shape. How do we do that kind of shading? And the third thing is contour shading which we'll do a little bit of today. So normally we, we have been doing a quick shading of uh, one direction lines and then 
another direction line and then another direction to make it darker. But then there is also one where you, you can do, you can shade in one direction back and forth and then shade in another direction. And then some directions are very funny. Uh, we, we, we are not very comfortable with that. So horizontal is fine, but when it comes to vertical and rounded shapes, it starts becoming tricky. So it all has to do with the ease with which you can move your fingers and your wrist. So those are the steps in which you can move forward. Oh, sorry. All right. So Aditi, just one more question. Yeah. Uh, when you start, do you start? Do you start lighter or do you start uh, from medium? It depends. And then go down uh, and darker. Uh, so it all depends on the shade that you're making. So right now, when I'll demonstrate, I'll show you how you normally start. It's not a rule that you always have to start with light. That is a good way to be safe. But sometimes it's just very tedious. You know you have to make a very dark shade. Like if you're making dark hair, what there's really no point in starting with light and wasting time over there. It's to no benefit at all. Uh, so mm -hmm. it, it you have to be very discerning. There are some places where you go light because it is the lightest. Some places... You leave till the end when you can just do one or two dark shades, layers, and that will be done. Uh, the light and the medium is where you need to be ready to be. You, you have to be flexible. So a dark and light is always comparative. Something is dark in comparison to something that is light and vice versa. Right. So how we get the overall effect depends on whether we have got... A, adequate or accurate contrast between these light and medium shades. So let me, I'll just demonstrate when we're doing the sphere, it'll become apparent. So I'm making the second sphere, the one which has uh, slightly softer edges. I'm not making it too large. You, you need to keep it a reasonable size. If we make in any of these practice objects larger than about two or three inches, even, even if it's a face no bigger than the flat of your palm for practice it's better because we we can't really shade in very big strokes and still maintain evenness so the sphere i'm making is just going to be about an inch and a half or so so make a loose square and don't worry about these lines flowing all over the place that's part of pencil sketching then here we are going to make this one uh, line that runs horizontally. You have a highlight, slightly vertical, and a highlight over here. And then you have some kind of shape from coming from the right. Now, if you think about tones over here, we have almost like zero pencil over here. Then maybe shade one here, shade two here, and then the darkest shade is in this patch. So it's my strategy would be to do a light, very light shade over the entire sphere. And in this case right now, it's just a circle. Highlights, I'm making slightly bigger than they are because then I can shade into this if need be and make them more subtle. Now, even here, as I'm shading, I'm modulating the pressure. The pressure was a little la uh, higher over there. And over here, I know it's going to be a lighter shade, so I've made it lighter. Now, this was all in one direction. Right now, I can see the lines over here, and this is fine. Oh, by the way, has everyone got those uh, paper stumps? 
because today I'd suggested we could do a little bit of blending. Yes, yes. Okay, if you have them, we can do that. If you don't have them, you can just use cotton buds or uh, you could use uh, something with which you can just uh, roll at the end of your brush or something and gently smudge the graphite. But we'll do that later. So right now we are not going to use the paper stumps. And I'm now gently increasing the darkness in this transition space that's between the light and the dark. And here the pressure is very light, but I've changed direction. And the reason for that light pressure is because this is a very fuzzy line. So I don't want it to look too sharp. Now, as we progress, what you will notice is that um, what looks like a sphere is actually just a bunch of shapes. That's the intention of this exercise. Strategically placed shapes and colored in, again, a strategic manner will create the illusion of a sph spherical object and that too, a metallic spherical object and that too, a slightly matte finished metallic object. Now you'll notice that along the edges of these highlights also there's a glow. So I won't take the dark shadow, even though it's really dark, too close to the edge of my highlights. So in this case, it helps me to create a very soft finish. And when I'm moving my pencil also, I'm not necessarily employing the same pressure consistently throughout. I am modifying the pressure according to what I think is required in that area. Now here again, the transition between this light and dark or medium dark and darker is fairly soft. So I'm not going, going to make it like a hard line. I will start shading the darker part from the central section of the dark rather than from the edge. That way you're always in control of how far and how dark and how sharp that edge is going to go.
So this patch is slightly bigger than the patch that I that's there in the picture. And because I had left in enough space, I can just lightly fuzz up this edge. So I'm barely touching the paper. Now, when I've come here, I'm, I will modify this gray based on how dark I have made the gray over here. Now, even in the light section, the more you observe, the more you'll notice that there is a little bit of a dark reflection of the cast shadow on one side. And then within that, it's slightly darker here, maybe a little bit over here as well. Maybe a little bit over here. So it's all very, very subtle. And then finally, And that very light shade will help you to make a nice fuzzy edge for the shadow.
Now in this, I can start making some parts sharp. So this line is much sharper than I have drawn it. So I can add more depth over there and continue to shade till I'm satisfied that it matches the reference image. How's it going? Are you getting it? Not looking very spherical. I think my highlights may be in the wrong place or the wrong size. I'll just show you. Okay. Mm. No, no. It It is looking spherical. Okay, some... uh, there is this. So here, where you uh -huh. where this shadow, there yeah. is little, little extra light space where so that's making it look like that uh, metal is a little dented in uh -huh. that. Position. Yes. So, yeah, just smoothen that out a little bit, and then on top over here again, there's yeah. a, there's a darker line. Just smoothen it into. Yeah. Yeah, that, that should that should solve okay. much of the problem. Wait, wait, okay. one thing. The shape of your highlight, your right, ah, is yeah. a little more curved. So just round it off so that okay. it's not as curved. So right so, now the curve that's is that's why it's looking curved. some something is not and from yeah. here it looks certainly that from far it's looking much better. Correct. <laughs> from it here it's not looking good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Now for the paper stumps, let's try making this uh, object because it's nice and smooth. Okay, so here we have to build in the uh, the darks over several layers. So what happens with stumps? And we'll we'll first make some test pieces. So you see that blending stumps can change how they change the tone. So here's one tip. Whenever you have any new tool, you must always do some kind of test uh, with it. So how does one test the blending stump? As usual, let's make some blocks of uh, just square blocks about two by two centimeters.
And in this, let's try making four tones. So start with lightest. Now in this particular case, in the next one, make it one layer of light all the way. Now since we've got four directions over here, use another direction to make half the square dark. So I'm just layering half of it dark. Now using the blending stump in the first one, we are going to move this in tiny circles so that we can spread the graphite into all the nooks and cranny. So I'm using it exactly like a pencil, although we can press the entire edge down. Right now, I'm just using the flattened tip like this, but you can go all the way down also, depending upon the area that you are, you require to blend. Quite a nifty little thing this is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm quite surprised at how it worked. <laughs> <laughs> now here we have two tones, right? So let's start by working on the lighter tone first and bring it all into the darker. Now the reason for this is because some of the graphite gets trans, trans uh, what am I saying? Ported? No. Something. Trans something. Transferred, I think. Furred, uh -huh. yes. Yes. <laughs> Transferred <laughs> onto the <laughs> <laughs> stump. So, if you go from dark to light, then obviously your lighter shades are going to be affected. So, I've done the, both of these using just one side of the paper stump. So, there is a little bit of graphite here. Now, using that same size, Aside, just see what happens if you use the stump on the paper. There is a little bit of gray that you get, right? So this is probably the lightest shade that we can get with this pencil when it is transferred onto your paper stump. This is also something you can use because it is, after all, loose graphite. Now here, let's try making a dark to medium to light and zero pencil zone. So zero pencil meaning don't come all the way to the bottom. Just leave a small patch that is paper. And now go from dark through medium. And now you've got enough medium on the paper stump to take this even further and fill up the whole box. So you, you get a smooth gradation, but also the lowest part can take the, the excess graphite from the stump and you get a much nicer um, gradation. Now the last test we're going to do, and by far this is not the last test, you can just do this time pass on a rainy afternoon if you have nothing to do, just make all sorts of boxes and try different types of combinations of things, different pencils. So I'm changing the pencil from my ultra dark stallion to a 6B, I just happened to find it. 
But what I'm going to do now is, uh, this is an art pencil. So the graphite is going to be much looser. So I'm going to now apply one layer in one direction. Blend this first. And then apply a second layer. Now apply a second layer in another direction, but just halfway or maybe three quarters of the way from left to right. And I'm going to blend this part also. So what I'm looking for is almost like a lab. Suppose I do this layer by layer and blend layer by layer. What kind of effect do I arrive at? Now maybe a third layer. And every time you do this blending, the last part always move a little bit into the previous section, adjust a little bit so that it smooths up. Like if I did layer one all the way, then layer two, I made it uh, in pencil till here. But when I blend it, I can go a little further so that whatever a little gap, um, there's a gap or transition that also gets smoothed over. Likewise over here. And now the last one. So as I notice it, that because of the blending, the pencil shading is also looking blended, the topmost layer, without having to blend at all. So here I'm going to write U uh, ultra dark. And this is. Uh, Okay, are you all seeing similar results? Uh, let me see among guys. Okay, all right. So in this one, you can have more blending. So when you when you are this was, we made it dark to medium to light, right? So we can, um, uh, let me spotlight for everyone. So here, either it was the original pencil work that was staggered. So you probably had three separate layers already. And then the blending, for the blending, then you can add a little more in the transitions. So just add a little extra where you see there, there is a very stark line and try blending it again. Yeah, let's see, Janita. Yeah, yours is also the same. You're getting three patches over here. This also is becoming a very stark patch. So we need to change that. It need not be this patchy. Yeah, much better, much better, very good. Uh, 
Aditi, how did you make the stump? I I just uh, just now I folded it into a cone. So okay. how's that that made? Uh, one minute. Let me see how you've made it. I just rolled it up into a cone. Okay, okay. So this these are commercially available paper stumps. Okay. okay. But what I have also done, the absence of one of these, is rolling paper and working with it. But sometimes paper can be uh, a little too abrasive in itself. So we need something softer. So try tissue paper if you have. And let me let me also try. Now, in all of this, please remember to keep a guard sheet handy. Because as it is your blending stuff, so we need something that is stiff. Uh, I'm using my pencil here. I haven't done this before, to be honest, because I didn't believe in blending uh, with, with, a, with any tool. But I've taken multiple layers of a rather thick tissue, very soft, like a two-ply tissue. And all we need to have is a point and a soft surface. So it can be cotton. It might also work with a soft cloth because this is very loose powder on paper. So we should be able to do it. Let me try. Uh, let's try making... Let me just mark this out. Suppose we try making a cylinder. And do this dark light. Okay, so now here I should be able to, so long as I get some force and traction. Already I'm getting a little bit of graphite on this tissue. I should be able to blend it quite easily. Now I am shading this in contour or I'm blending it in contour. So going from side to side rather than top to bottom. Because top to bottom works for shading with pencil. That is applying the graphite. But blending can be done in any direction. So over here, in order to create the illusion of the cylindrical body it might be better to blend back and forth between left and right sides of the cylinder now here there isn't too much of a variation here there's a patch so i'll shift to my 6p and add extra medium but in a space slightly smaller than the one I want, and then continue the same. Now here, 
we can use also an eraser. Not merely to erase sections. Uh, and please use the flexible eraser here. I can't find mine. So I'll get it. And you can create things like a negative highlight. So often in objects, metallic objects, you will find that even in the darkest area, there are highlights. Here now, I might also be able to just use the tissue and the excess lead that I have on the tissue to create a very nice soft shadow underneath the object. So this is, I'm not using any pencil shading here. I'm just taking whatever graphite has transferred onto the tissue to create a soft fuzzy shadow. And like everything else, it's how you hold that spot. If you, if you think there's too much happening, just roll the paper and pick up excess from another side or spread it more. And you can go back and then if you want to make it even deeper, you can add some more graphite and then go right back and blend it. Nice, no? It's such a magical tool. <laughs> totally. What is? People made it and sold it like this in packets. Wow. <laughs> and what happens now when this edge goes all weird? So you just, what do you do with it? I mean, how, does it wear down or you just kind of give it up? You know, I haven't the faintest clue because I don't <laughs> use this. I have not come to the end of even one of them. I know. And you get a packet of <laughs> eight. What do you do? <laughs> yes, I've yes. got a packet of like yeah eight. But but this length and both sides. Huh. Uh, okay, maybe it's just a stub, and when that kind of splays mm. and becomes broad. I don't know whether they have a method of cutting it or they don't. No, 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 no. You can don't don't make don't use the tip. Oh, always keep it at an angle. I see. So it does not become it does not become bluntly top ah. like a pencil would. I see. So at best, what will happen is over time, the tip yeah. becomes dark, but the graphite has just stained the paper. It won't be, uh, it won't come off as easily. Okay, no, that coming off is not the point. The point is that the tip is getting ruined. You know what I mean? It's getting right. it broad. Won't, and... No, so keep it uh, at an angle. Plant it. Take yeah. it. Take it. Okay. Okay. All right, should we attempt the, uh, the jug? Are you all comfortable now with the stump? Okay.
So even the jug, you can make it fairly small. Don't make it too large. Now the construction of the jug, please do not start from the top and make the opening and then try to make that shape. That's all a big nightmare. Make a circle or an oval shape for the base. Make a center line through it. Make a neck. And only extend it as much as you need to. So keep an eye on this shape. Where is the spout with respect to the body? It's a little inside. Slightly heavier at the bottom. It's got an interesting base. How far is the base? Maybe with respect to the opening. It's not that far out. The handle also comes up a little bit. Now, whenever you have things like these handles, notice that they have two edges. There's a thickness. So you'll have this part, but you'll have a little bit of shadow going from the inside. That is what shows you that the handle has got a certain amount of thickness. This is the edge, right? So you have a light and dark shadow because there is an edge there. And then there's also an edge here and an edge here. So all these are just shapes that we need to notice. Now we have a highlight somewhere here and here, small one, large one, and then two shades of gray within this. This is probably the edge of the table. One dark shadow here, and then dark shadow here. So this also is a nice way to cordon off areas where you're going to put a particular shape shade or shadow. Then there is a very subtle reflection. Do you see it? Make it only if you see it. So these subtle reflections are also important to make the object look like its form. All right, so now I am going to create a gray that is light to very light to light again, and then very light over here. So this is light, then this is barely touching because I'm going to bring in the blending stump. But I've just put a few lines of graphite there. I'm working with that Uva pencil now. I've left a few places unshaded. Can you see here that there are lots of lines? Okay. So it's not a smooth finish because we have the tool to smoothen this out. Right. 
We are also going to be using a flexible eraser for the highlights. So if a little bit of your blending goes into the place marked for the highlight, that's fine. What we want is to imitate this smooth finish of the uh, material of the jug. Here also there's a highlight. I'm using a mechanical pencil now to make this highlight edge. And I'm using the leftover transferred graphite on my stump to shade these areas. Even here, it's a very sharp white edge here. Now, every place we have to add a darkness, add in the central part of that area. Don't add from the edge. Because as you've seen, we can spread this color out. So while I've marked out the area that I want, the dark shadow, I'm going to deposit some graphite only in the central part. Right now, I'm ready to blend. Now, this blending you can try to go according to the contour. Instead of picking any direction, just go 
in this nice rounded um, stroke. When you come to the center, the stroke will be straightish like this. And then along the edges, the stroke will become rounded and rounder. And extend this blending to the line that you had drawn earlier. On the right edge, the edge is sharp, so we can start shading from that edge definitely because otherwise it won't look finished, it'll look fuzzy edged. You don't want that. But as you come closer, reduce uh, the area. Now here there is an even darker shade I have to make for where the handle is joining. So I'm using this 2B graphite pencil. Now here the shadows are really subtle in the handle.
Now, some places like over here by the handle, we have some really sharp edge shadows also. So don't compromise on those. Leave them sharp because they tell a different story. So after you've filled in the mid-tones, then very cautiously you can start filling in the deeper tones or deepening some of the mid-tones. So this is what I meant by a constant adjustment between light and dark and light and dark. And uh, the more you see your picture, the more uh, details you start noticing, the subtleties that you know you can recreate. So like over here now, I can see this edge uh, of probably the table differently. So I'll shade this section differently.
might be dangerous to use this uh, stub sometimes. I think I'm using a thicker one than I should. Huh? Because it kind of smooths out things which you don't want smoothed out very quickly. <laughs> no, no, but that's fine. Then, uh, yeah, go over, go over it with okay. the pencil. Yeah. Just have a look because now I'm I'm not I'm getting a very dark gray jug. It's not looking like a white jug. Right. See, let's see. Let's very see. dark. Of course, no, it's crooked. No. That's besides the point. That's okay. not the point anyway. Yeah, but yes. <laughs> shit. Okay, one so it's a darker jug, no? It is. Maybe yeah, I think you could have made it lighter, but then yeah. don't worry. This is how you are introducing yourself to the medium which is the blending part. So I'm quite happy with the result because you've got many of the subtle pieces. You've got the shape and you've got the uh, the 2D, uh, sorry, the 3D effects, mm -hmm. the adequate highlights and everything. So this is great. So now, of course, after doing it, you realize that maybe your lights can be lighter. Much. Yeah, and then wait before you make anything too dark and also how much you spread. So how much uh, lead or graphite you want to deposit on paper and uh, how it reacts is the learning that we have right now. Yeah, actually it was much lighter till I started using the stuff. Ah. And then it kind of just became so, that's why I said it's quite a dangerous tool because it spread ah. the graphite all over. That's I mean, I tried, you know, that was the thing. So now I know, use a thinner stuff and uh, I'm using a number four. It has a number on it. Strangely, I just saw. Huh. So maybe a, size, a two or something would have been nicer for just a small object. Right. Yeah. Mm Aditi, here's mine. Even uh, my highlights have kind of. Um, oh, I think they, okay, yeah. <laughs> they got darker because it's of the. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Never mind. So, okay. Now we know the threshold, I guess. You know? Yeah. Okay. This is mine. That's the thing. It's a. Uh, um, it's it has its own dynamic nature, yeah. Denita, I think it's good. Why do you have that border around it? Why do you have a square or rectangle around this thing? No, I just made that and then I started drawing inside that. But then your handle, you squeezed it into your square, is it? Let's see. Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, this is the guideline. Guideline is dating the design. Okay. This happens very frequently. Yeah. Huh? Remember, the guideline is not sacrosanct. It's just there. So don't modify the shape to suit the guideline. The guideline will show you more or less where the how the shape of the objects object needs to be. And after that, you have to learn to go beyond the, uh, the guideline, if need be. Aditi, can I show mine? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. I know how, uh, I think it's become quite dark. <laughs> it has. Where is it? One has become dark. Okay, what... So, what pencil are you using, Nita? I'm using 2B. Okay. So, it's, it's, don't worry. it's just the blending thing, but you're getting it. As long as we've got the blending today, that's good. Okay. So, now that we know this, I think you can make the metal illustration also. So what I wanted to really work on was, let's see if we have these, uh, if I've shared those images, no. So let me share another bunch of images, which 
uh, from the portrait collection. Ariti, so after blending with the stump, you went over it again with the pencil, is it? Yes, yes, several Attached. times. I kept adding a slightly a lighter or slightly deeper shade in different, different places. Okay. So it wasn't, it, was, it wasn't just a one application and then blending exercise. Okay. So I'm sharing a couple of these. Um, portrait images. Or the last two are the same. Would you like to try these? So the first one, it's all just blending. It's only uh, a blending exercise. There's hardly any sharp pencil line. So just getting different tones, applying. Probably this was also done in charcoal. So you apply charcoal and then blend. Probably also blend it with the finger rather than a, a paper stump. But try and give this a go because uh, here the focus of the illustration is only shadows and soft shadows. Here is a combination of soft shadows as you would see on a plaster bust. So you have a, a few very sharp lines to also indicate the texture of plaster itself. And then here, this is not a pencil sketch. This is just a plaster face. So again, over here, this, this can be very, very fun drawing these shapes with just the pencil shading and a little bit of uh, blend. Okay, I'm going to try this fellow. Give it a shot. You can start with how I would start would be just, uh, oh, one second, huh, Amulya. So uh, I would yeah. start with just one feature, maybe the left eye. And then from there, just blend, blend, blend your way and make the next shape of shadow don't even try to make an eye inside that just look at how the shape is it's slightly there are some very subtle dark lines over here for the eye and then blend this into a sculpted nose like that and move forward okay we have another 10 minutes so give it a shot let's see how it looks okay let's see amulya Aha, uh -huh. is that the last image? Did you just make this right now? Oh, it was made earlier. Okay. <laughs> you hold it a little to your left, a little to your left because it's leaving the screen. Ah. Nice. Do you want to try just blending this? Okay, let's see. Okay, so I'm making the first few shapes. As usual, we'll make them in pencil first. So 
we could try with making the whole like an oval shape of the face because we need some kind of starting point he's bald so much and you have the eyes shadow coming down no aditi uh -huh. there was one thing that i remember now drawing when i used to try and draw, draw faces not with all the shading just you know how you do with just outlines of noses and eyes when you don't know how to draw a face uh -huh. so um, there was this framework which i found quite useful of drawing that center line at the angle where that fellow is looking you know what i mean i'll show you yeah, yeah. so that is that is when we are changing the shape uh, the direction in which the face is looking okay okay Okay. But that that helps. Because I could never, you know, manage where how much of the eye will show and stuff. So yeah. it kind of helped a little bit, you know. It, but so, like I said, uh, now we are going to do portraiture in May, by the way. So that okay. whole month okay. we will okay. be focusing on this, and we will be doing, uh, yeah. we will be doing all uh, some more techniques in making portraits also apart from what we've done okay so i have shaded as i have drawn because when you do the two together you see these shades better uh, sorry distance is better not just shades as you shade you start filling up space so then that once that space is occupied, you know how much volume it requires and then you can keep distributing it as you move forward. So my process is just to add a very light layer of uh, the pencil. So this is stage one. Let me see if I can take a picture of this. And here, because there's gray outside as well, you can fearlessly shade by holding the stump much flatter. So even if it goes out a little bit, that's fine. The background is itself gray. So what I meant earlier was, now I'm blending the shadow of the eye over here, just the central part, not the edges. And I'll use the same thing to fill in the gray between the eyes. And then I'll come and fill in the shape over here, for the second eye. And if you're ever unsure about how much you need to do, Always do the central part instead of the edges. And then start first applying 
the excess blend onto your shape before you add the pencil. Now remember to keep a guard sheet when you're going over and over something like this otherwise before you know it the whole thing will be a big mess So next year, I'm going to start my book backwards. <laughs> my next, the, I have three pages left of this one. Uh -huh. And then I will start with it from the back cover, which is much better. Meaning I'll draw on the other side of the book. Hmm. Meaning backwards. Now, when it comes to features like the nose, um, if you have a very sharp pencil, use that. Because the firstly, we're making this in a very small size. And the features, uh, the shading is really sharp. It needs to be pretty accurate. And if you blended the first layer well, the, this dark layer would uh, might not even need blending. Just at at this at the septum, there is a light highlight also.
How's it looking, ladies? Are you getting it? I could just get lost. I completely forgot to, uh, that it's close to 12.30. <laughs> okay, so before we end, I just wanted to show you how this eye is made because here at least there are a few details that one can see but in this eye it's mostly just shading no? so what i recommend is to gently shade the area that you see in that shape but I normally, now there is an indication of an eye over here. Do you see it? Maybe when drooping downwards a little bit. So I, I often do make that shade, but I will cover it up. And there are some subtle sh shadows or highlights that I tend to put in just because I know that that's the structure of the eye. So on the top, you see a little bit of the shape of the eyebrow. The rest is all dark. And here I will also do this part. Like within the dark, I will make the semblance of an eye, but it's very subtle, it's almost not there. And this will all get lost once you finish the shading along the edge. Because that is also just as dark. Aditi, so without blending, I've come this far. Huh? The facial features looks like an escaped convict. <laughs> <laughs> He does, but I be quite <laughs> But that's what my current skill set. I can only be a <laughs> Please post your pictures. They're going to look very funny. <laughs> okay.
This can be as it is. He's got such a sullen face. Uske upar, we are trying to do this with pencil sketching. He is going to look like a booth in any case. Or a convict. So there's a guy named uh, on Instagram. What's his name? Uh, I think he's Carlos Delgado. C-A-R-L-O-S Delgado. I think he's the guy. Let me quickly check. He's the one who does all these multicolored portraits, no? Uh, it's no, either sorry, that or... Mm -hmm. um, he does a lot of work with just shadow. <laughs> he does these faces. This is an all and all kind kinds of different colors, planes with Let me, I'm just getting his page. I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, he's got lots of color also. What I had found yeah, in the was his black and white shadow work. And he just starts with this. How am I going to show you this? Okay, have a look at this. So it's all just making dark. Ah. Quite fearless. Yeah, because he's probably not trying to make any particular person's portrait. And um, he has a sense of where you have shadows and where you have highlights, but he's gone and made it color. So this was not the black and white that he came out. So now, but even then, look at his. Yeah, oh. so it's more clumpy the painting, and yet he pulls out features by then slowly sculpting some line and making it more uh, a slightly thinner perhaps. Or the right color in the right place. Nice. And then there's something like this. All just very, first very dark dramatic shapes. Where is he? So just check it out. Because his, yes. his, uh, Forte is to start with just patches for the eyes, nose, mouth, and then build all sorts of features with that. Okay, so next week, where are we at? 21st. So next week, um, we it's have... Fun. Next week, we'll have one more pencil sketching session. He's looking very sullen, but I'll finish him. Okay. <laughs> nice. This is looking like Picasso's blue period. Very good. I don't think. <laughs> if anybody tells me I'm looking like Picasso's any period, it is certainly not a compliment to my painting. It's one to his. But not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So I'll catch you all next week then. Uh, just a heads up. Next week, I'll be taking the class from Mahabreshwar. 
So uh, if there is, if the weather is not permitting, if something happens with Wi-Fi or whatever, just I thought I'd go on. But uh, I do have classes on Monday as well. So I'll know whether there's a problem or not. I'll inform you well in advance. Yeah. If there's a problem. That's okay. What date would it be now? 28. Um, 28. Right. 28. All right. Okay. So yeah, you might as well, if it's bad weather and stuff, just take on that bit. Yeah, yeah. I'll let it well in advance. Or give us homework on the on the mobile and say, yeah, do this yeah. shit. Maybe, yeah. Maybe so yeah. I, I can do that. Yeah, I don't foresee a problem. But uh, if there is, my, I mean, if, when you're not uh, informed or not prepared for it, there'll be hajar problems. And when you're prepared, then everything yeah. goes very smoothly. I don't know whether the preparation works or uh, whether it's just uh, blind faith that works. <laughs> preparation usually does. Okay, good. Okay, so I will prepare. So see you all Thank then next week. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Bye. 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 Some of the time.